Christensen's Disruptive Innovations by Daniela, Kathleen, and Henry. Types of Innovation Companies have two basic options when they seek to build new growth businesses. They can try to take an existing market from an entrenched competitor with sustaining innovations, or they can try to take on a competitor with disruptive innovations that either create new markets or take root among incumbents' worst customers. What is disruptive innovation? It is the theory that can be used for describing the impact of new technologies on a firm's existence. This was created by Clayton Christensen in 1997. Clayton Christensen used that phrase in his book, The Innovator's Dilemma, when new technologies cause great firms to fail. From his book, he showed that time and again, almost all the organizations that have died or been displaced from their industries could see the disruption coming, but did nothing until it was too late. By doing what good companies are supposed to do, they cater to their most profitable customers and focused investments where profit margins are most attractive. The established industry leaders are on a path of sustaining innovations and leave themselves open for disruptive technologies to bury them. The reasons for these are the resource allocation process of established companies which are designed to maximize profits through sustaining innovations. Sustaining innovations retain customers. When disruptive innovations emerge, established companies are paralyzed. They are typically cheaper and simpler to use versions of existing products that target low-end or entirely new customers. Disruptive innovation improves, steals more market share, and replaces the reigning product. They aim for big established corporations rather than new or low-end markets. There are also two distinct types of disruptive innovations. The first type creates a new market by targeting non-consumers. The second competes in the low end of an established market. Here is a line graph showing the performance versus time for sustaining innovations, disruptive innovations, and the performance that customers can utilize or absorb. Disruptive innovation affects all kinds of companies as they can be impacted by technology innovation change. The model shows that as the performance demanded by the customers of an existing market increases over time, so does the performance provided within a technological paradigm. 
Disruption and commoditization actually go hand in hand. A company that overshoots simply can't win. Disruptive innovation requires a separate strategy outside the usual business procedures, which is what leads normal business practices to fail in the face of disruptive innovation. The process must be emergent and focused on unanticipated opportunities, problems, and successes, rather than what's intended and focused on improved understanding of what works and what doesn't. Instead of designing products and services that address current behavior of the current customers, sustain technology. The underlying aims of potential target customers should inform the design of innovations. Understanding what people actually need, though, is far from easy. It can be difficult for established business to achieve success based on disruptive innovation. Disruptive-based businesses can achieve profits very fast due to their nature, addressing new markets, usually smaller, or addressing low end of existing markets, often the lower profit side. Venture capitalists and shareholders are increasingly impatient for businesses to deliver profits. So, companies try to follow tried and true business procedures, chasing profits, keeping their current customers by meeting their needs, trying to expand business based on their core competencies. However, the whole point of disruptive innovation theory is that they risk death with decisions to do this by ignoring technologies that do not appear to address their customers' needs, because that becomes fatal when two problematic trajectories of progress interact. A major modern example of disruptive innovation is the cellular phone. When first introduced, cellular phones were bulky, heavy, and expensive. Motorola's Dynatac 8000X, for example, shown here on the left, was offered to the public in 1983 for only $4,000, and had a talk time of about 30 minutes. Ma Bell, the U.S. monopoly in telecommunications, scoffed. This was no threat, it was just a toy for the rich. And yet, this is the very definition of disruptive technology. A technology that begins with worse product performance than established technology, but has some fringe features that a few fringe customers want. This enables new tech companies to find a market for this technology, while existing tech and companies find little reason to bother with it. However, as the disruptive technology improves through evolutionary steps, sustaining technology rather than disruptive technology, it slowly displaces the prior tech as it begins to better meet the mainstream customer's needs, sometimes in unforeseen ways. As an example, you could pretty easily foresee that cellular phones could someday impact standard wire telephony services if their coverage, portability, and cost could be improved. Indeed, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention notes that wireless substitution is continuing to increase. As of the end of 2010, three out of every ten homes in the U.S. have only wireless access, an accelerating rate of 3% increase over just the previous six months.
Cellular phones have disrupted other, less foreseeable industries as well. One disruptive innovation is itself being disrupted by another disruptive technology of cellular phones. Even as digital point-and-shoot cameras triumph over established traditional film photography, Kodak, a once-proud icon of the industry, declared bankruptcy in January 2012. Cameras themselves are now losing sales due to the increasing quality of digital cameras built so very conveniently into digital phones. Cameras only began to be integrated into cell phones in 2002. They were poor quality, considered just a simple toy. But the convenience of having the camera inside a device you were already carrying opened the market and paved the way to evolutionary, sustaining improvements in the technology that allowed them to nibble away at established point-and-shoot camera markets, in which the sales fell by 17% in 2011. Now, the leading camera provider, as of the last three years, is Nokia, a cellular provider. GPS companies are also feeling the impact of the cellular phones. Since smart cellular phones have GPS technology built in, and usually simple apps already built in that handle GPS functions, the sales and stock prices of the standalone GPS units have been falling. For example, Garmin, once a powerful maker of standalone units, has had its sales fall 11% in the third quarter of 2011 alone, and its stock prices dropped in half in the last two years. What many of these companies are attempting to do are evolutionary steps, producing uh, applications for the cell phones in promoting their own GPS functions and mapping systems as superior to the built-in. However, as evolutionary steps, this will likely have little difference towards the disruptive technology. The music industry has been a constant stream of disruptive innovations, culminating most recently in cellular phones. Vinyl records gave way to recordable and modable audio cassettes. Cassettes were then replaced by higher quality and more durable digital compact discs. Digital compact discs were then supplanted by the more flexible and very shareable MP3 files downloadable, which also came with skip-free solid-state players, unlike compact discs. Then the MP3 files were used and further surpassed in using Apple's iTunes, iPod players, and the iPod systems, the introduction of the cellular phones into this chain. This granted legitimacy from the uh, pirating downloads and greater convenience and security for music downloads while also reassuring the uh, music industry itself. The next link in this innovation chain is cloud computing. iTunes is now being challenged by cloud services such as iHeartRadio, which allows personal computers or cellular phones using apps to play radio or customize song selections without the individual needing to purchase the music themselves. Time will only tell if these cloud services will follow the usual disruptive innovation patterns by incrementally displacing existing technology.